Okay, if you've been out in your garden lately, you're knowing that insects are starting to flare up everywhere. So it's time to pull out the get big guns. Time to stop fighting insects with insects. Now, ladybugs are the most popular insect uh, that we use for controlling other insects. Mostly they go after um, aphids. They just, they're like little candy. So if you've ever been out and you see these little gray or green droplet looking insects crawling all over your roses or, or a number of other plants, those are typically aphids. And these little girls will go out there and you release them in the garden and there's, um, they're gonna eat up to about 50 ladybugs a day and then they're gonna lay their eggs and then the babies of a uh, ladybug look nothing like the adults. They actually look like little dragons, but they start crawling around the same uh, plant eating it, uh, eating aphids and cleaning up your plants. So the trick is not just knowing what's the right insect to apply uh, for what problem you're trying to control, but also the application and the timing. So we got a couple different things, but ladybugs in general, the issue with them is they wanna go down in the evening. So it's starting to get dark out. The plants are kind of, everything's cooling off. They don't really fly a lot at night, but the trick is typically to moisten the plants. So what are your plants? Get a little moisture on the plants and then go around and sprinkle the ladybugs actually right on the plants to have the infestations. They will scout around the yard, but we wanted to keep on the plants that we want to control the insects. I don't care if there's aphids out on my weeds, I want them to control my roses and to control my other insects. So I'm gonna sprinkle these right around the exact plants where I find it because the likeliness that if that the reason we do it in the evening is we want them to kind of like relax on the plants, start scurrying around looking for food, water, and shelter. And then hopefully they find a good aphid infestation and never desire going anywhere else. So the key is to get out there and try to keep them on your plants long enough that they have a snack and take up residency. Now, for those that are watching this video, uh, it is currently coming up on the 4th of July. We are actually at the tail end of the season for these insects. So the batch we have now is our last ones for the season, uh, but we still have a few different kinds. And so one of them is a power pack. What this is, is a pack of ladybugs with another insect called lace wings. Now, lace wings are just, what I find is they have a much bigger palette, uh, taste palette for what insects are gonna go after. So they will eat uh, aphids. Supposedly, they'll eat up to about a thousand aphids a day. So if you have a really bad infestation between them and the larvae, they're gonna devour the aphids. But they will go after lots of other insects, including the tough thrip um, that you might have floating around. So therefore, this combination um, kind of gives you more spectrum cover so you don't have to worry about it. You can just inoculate your garden. The problem with the lace wings is the fact that they're not really an insect. They're not as fun as the ladybugs because I mean, when you look around this, you actually see lots of ladybugs crawling around. Kind of fun. Uh, but lace wings come as dormant eggs. And so that some people will just sprinkle them around the plants. Um, but if you're trying to control an individual plant where you might have spider mites or thrip or some other kind of insect, you can actually sprinkle some of the eggs inside a little Dixie cup, hang them right off the plant that you're trying to control. And that way, as the larvae uh, emerge from the plant, they start crawling around that exact plant where um, hopefully, again, they find shelter, food and water and stop munching away at all your insects. Now, actually, to see one of my favorite insects uh, up close, you're gonna have to watch this video all the way to the end. Now, one of my mo uh, one of the most powerful in uh, insects that we use really isn't an insect; it's actually a nematode. Uh, but for those of you who want to control grubs and you have problems with fungus gnats uh, or any kind of soil-borne insect, you want to use nematodes. And I have to say, it's probably the most underutilized um, natural, I guess I would say, control uh, that we sell. Yeah, it, because it's a little bit more involved. The other ones are fun. You get to see them. You get to see the insects. Uh, but at the same time, it's kind of cause and effect. You can bring it right to your plant and see what's going on. These are microscopic, and you can't see what's going on. But at the same time, it's coming in the summer. The Japanese beetles are starting to fly, emerge and starting to fly around. The, all the beetles are starting to fly around and those that aren't are gonna be swarming any day now. And so therefore, that means they're laying their eggs and they're gonna start laying eggs in your lawn and that's where your grubs come in. So nematodes will last up to two years in the, sea, in the soil and you kind of just sprinkle it around and they're just kind of there hungry. And any of the soil-borne insects, 
they're going to start hunting them down and killing them. So if you want to control grubs naturally, this is your option. Just not overly practical for, say, an acre lot. Um, you need an awful lot of these boxes because each box only covers 2,000 square feet. But if you want a really uh, effective grub knockdown, that'll do it. Okay, and for those of you who actually watched to the end, now it's my favorite. The praying mantis. And this is, again, the tail end of our season. Um, the cocoons can't be refrigerated that long. What you do is you buy them as, I can't, I don't think you can really see it right there. You can see all the babies starting to emerge inside there. There's a little chrysalid in there. And they're just a little cocoon, basically a little egg sac that, that's in there. And that's how you buy it. But then eventually they hatch. And there could be up to 200 of these little praying mantis coming out there and they're hungry. And when they're small, they eat little insects. And then as they grow and get bigger, they eat much bigger insects. And I have to say, every year we have a batch that hatches early. I feel bad, I shoot a video, and then I release them in my landscape. And it is fun throughout the year trying to see how many adults actually kick around. Again, I never really see them. <laughs> Once in a blue moon, I'll see them. But I have to say a handful of times a year, we'll have a sighting of an adult towards August. And, um, but it is fun watching them and knowing that they're out there doing the job also makes it uh, a little cooler for my sons. But I'm gonna show you these guys up close. So we got this out in our little raised garden. Things are just starting to grow. But praying mantis are great for trying to control some of the earwigs as they get older. So when they're little, they're just gonna eat little insects. But as they get bigger, they will munch down on any of the insects they find. So that's it. These little critters, sprinkle some around. They, they, most of them started taking off the minute I opened it up and put them over here, but we'll sprinkle some in one garden, put some in the other garden, but as they grow and mature, they'll start scouting the whole landscape. So for us having these insects released in the yard, knowing the greenhouses are out back, uh, makes me think about one of the biggest things you have to pay attention to if you're gonna use any kind of predatory insects for control in your landscape. You don't want to have used traditional insecticides within, I'd say, two weeks as a rule of thumb. Some pesticides are safe for uh, beneficials and they'll say it right on the packaging. Uh, but do not think that just because you're applying organic insecticides on your flowers that that's safe for uh, any of these beneficial insects. Insecticides are insecticides. Uh, unless it specifically says, says that it is safe for natural predators, then you have to consider the fact that whether it's synthetic or organic, it's still going to kill your insects. It doesn't know that the ladybugs or the praying mantis or any of those are desirables. It just knows it's an insect and it's probably going to kill them. So please pay attention to all of that. Uh, you can bridge the gap, but if you've applied anything in your landscape traditionally, I'd hold off a little bit longer, then release the beneficials. And um, it's just a fun way to uh, fight Mother Nature with Mother Nature. Hope that helps. Take care.